Training Week is represented by the coalition and sponsored by CSDS. And there are campus events everywhere. The interior design is being displayed in the Tearing Gallery, uh, second floor, uh, Pratt Studio, and the fashion design is being displayed. Their work, um, second floor of Steuben. Uh, furniture design is displayed in the gallery in front of the security and the uh, um, Pratt Studio. And also the closing reception will be taking place at Tearing Gallery at 5.30 on Thursday. I have heard of Green Week. Actually. Well, I know that there are going to be a bunch of different exhibits from different departments, like the fashion department, where they're going to be creating different sustainable ways of wearing clothes and things like that. So just to learn more about sustainability and just what we can do as students to help create and or like create ideas on how to integrate being sustainable into our daily lives. It's it's a pretty daily part of my life, I'd say. Being in art school, I feel like we can design things. I could probably come up with certain methods to help um, with pollution and other things that cause climate change. But like if we make more green friendly um, items, it can help. My name is Jamie Stein. I direct the graduate degree in environmental systems management here in the School of Architecture. So Green Week originally started from a group called Sustainable Pratt, which was a collection of faculty and students and staff here at Pratt that would meet once a month and we would have discussions about how we can increase sustainability on campus. So that has grown. I mean, that was nine years ago when we first started meeting, and back then I was a student. Uh, and now it has grown into really showcasing the work that students do throughout the campus. We had interior design here, we had fashion design, furniture design, industrial design, environmental systems, graduate architecture, planning. So now it's become really a campus-wide event, and that's Green Week. Uh, what is a sustainable design practice? A sustainable design practice, I think it's something that focuses on what's called the three E's, right, of sustainability. Environment, economy, and um, equity. And equity can also stand for sort of social good or social justice. So what we try to do is we incorporate uh, benefits to community, benefits to the environment, and also economic benefits into our designs. So whatever you might be designing, you need to think about those three things being incorporated into your design. How did you get interested in uh, when I was here as a student, as a graduate student, so geez, back in 2006, uh, I got interested in the Sustainable Pratt group, and we started talking about how to reduce waste, how to use less energy, uh, how to create uh, any products out of more sustainable materials that had uh, less of an impact on the earth and the earth's resources. And so I met faculty here at Pratt that were doing that work. Uh, Eva Hanhart is one of them. She was here in the School of Planning. Uh, and she's the one who got me interested in doing this type of work. My name is Natalie Minot, and I'm a qualifying uh, Master's of Science in Interior Design student. So that's the first of three years in the program. I just started in August, and my undergraduate degree was from Michigan Technological University in Environmental Engineering. So I really hope to combine both fields of study in a career. So it's an existing building in the Bayard Building by Lewis Sullivan, and that's on Bleecker and Broadway. So it's a hypothetical location for an integrative health center. And so what we were given were, you know, an actual space of two stories or two um, two floors to design a health center within. Um, and that was we were allowed to remove some of the floor plates. So you could have, you know, soaring ceilings, um, perhaps from a meditation space some students did. So starting to look at breaking down those boundaries for healing properties. So the project given to the qualifying year um, was an integrative health center to incorporate sustainable practices. So one way is materiality. And that was for, for my project was done using photovoltaic cells um, because there's direct sunlight from one of the, both two facades. Um, 
So I use, utilize that in a seating area, so those can be used to charge cell phones if you're relaxing. Um, and then natural cork, also it has an acoustic property, so another way to develop the space sustainably is to consider acoustics because, you know, it might not be visual, that's what my project focused on, is that acoustics can really affect um, human well-being. And so that can be done using uh, materiality, cork is one. There's a lot of acoustic uh, panels out there, but cork is a natural solution to that. Other materials include natural stone floorings, uh, sandstone flooring. So that's a raw stone that you know, doesn't actually need polished at all, perhaps just a sealant. And reclaimed and local uh, certified wood, FSC. As well as um, bio glass material throughout. That's a recycled glass component. And uh, beyond materials, my project considered steam recycling. Uh, Bikram yoga is the hot yoga that can utilize raised temperatures for yeah. the practice of yoga. So, one thing I started exploring in my space was having an open ceiling above a locker room and a ceiling accessible from a sauna, a steam room, to access the Bikram yoga to see if you could do a steam recycling. I think that in general, sustainability should stem from cities that are high, highly populated. It's where you see these concerns starting out right away. So it's in the heart of New York City, and that would be where people need to start considering this. It's very crowded. You, you see limited resources. People that live out in the middle of the country will be affected at a much later date. You know, it really reaches them at a longer period of time. So yeah. sustainability can start being recognized in, in populated places and. In general, you know, um, sustainability needs to start being considered beyond materiality. That's a huge part of it right now, but actual systems, yeah. you know, incorporating gray water systems or incorporating energy systems that um, reclaim energy that is, a lot of it is wasted right now. So we can go a lot further. You know, you're, perhaps you're using sustainable materials, but you're considering what it's like for a human inside that space. This year, Pratt Institute was participating in protecting the environment of our planet again during the wonderful and unique event called Green Week. Many professors and students united in order to work on and design numerous creative projects dedicated to the significant problem of sustainability. The main purpose of the event every year at Pratt is to show and educate people about many interesting environment-friendly ways of preserving the world around us. There was a great variety of amazing exhibitions, lectures, and workshops that encouraged more people to be involved in improving the environment. Thank you for helping put this together. Um, it really is a fabulous event. Thank you. Thank you. Events of Green Week. It's an all-day Saturday event with about 16 different lectures and programs and workshops. Um, that just gets better every year. And this year we were, we were able to live stream the event through YouTube and capture it as an archive. So for people who weren't there, if you go to the CSDS site, actually listen to some of the lectures that were given over the course of the day. We had great exhibitions this year of student work by fashion, architecture, interior design, an open call for a postcard competition around fracking. So I really wanted to have, uh, give special thanks to Jamie Stein, Brent Porter, Alex uh, Barker, and Meta Brimzema from the architecture program for the exhibit they put on over at Higgins. It was beautiful. Thank you very much. And for producing other events at Greenweave. Rachel Miller put together a fashion program for that. It's great to have that uh, perspective around sustainability. And Carol Crawford from Interior Design, who put together this evening's event, is also responsible for the Coastal uh, Crises uh, exhibit. And Yutaka, who put together the uh, Tsunami Disaster Relief exhibit that you're looking at in the room today. Um, and also um, one more person, Allison, is from uh, Foundation, who has been doing a number of events around fracking and kind of driving that um, issue home. So um, thank you again, and just one last round of applause, because it really does take all these people to make it happen. Um, I think it really has to have a future. I mean, if we're going to keep living on this planet in a comfortable manner, we have to take sustainability and really place it high on our priorities list, because otherwise, you know, we're just going to have... Yeah. 
a wasteland after a while. More often than not, choosing to live a sustainable life is much better for you. I think one of the best ways to do it is probably just educating the public, because that's, from my experience at least, that definitely has a big influence on whether or not people are living sustainably, is if they even know what that really means, if they understand how easy it is and the different ways that they can live sustainably and give back to the environment.